it's cute, and yeah, they're trying to say something, and that's all very nice. But compared to the master's painting, there's really no comparison. So that's what we're saying. As, as far as material enjoyment is concerned, yes, yes, it's very nice. But once you taste this spiritual enjoyment, you don't ever want to go back to material enjoyment again. Uh, it's so dry, so dull, so pale and flat compared to the real taste of spiritual enjoyment and love. See, that's Krishna's taste. What does Krishna enjoy? For example, when we offer food to Krishna, is Krishna, is Krishna enjoying the food? Huh? Our, our plain old material food <laughs> that we offer? Huh? Does Krishna enjoy that? Not really. The food is just, uh, accepting the offering of food is just a pretext to enjoy the relationship of love, of service with the devotee. Huh? And Krishna reciprocates our service in so many ways. So what is Krishna enjoying actually? He's enjoying the rasa. He's enjoying the spiritual emotion of the devotee's service and offering his service to the devotee in return. See, Krishna maintains everyone anyway. He maintains all the living entities that exist in all the universes and all the planets. Huh? Whether they worship him or not, he's still maintaining them. He is still giving them bodies so that they can live, and so on. But when, when one of those living entities turns to him and begins to offer their devotional service out of love, then Krishna really enjoys that. He loves that. Huh? That's why he recommends it in all the Vedic scriptures. So when the living entity approaches Krishna in love and begins to render devotional service, Krishna enjoys that love far more than the devotional service that the devotee offers. That, that, that service is just a pretext. Huh? It's just a... Uh, an excuse to exchange these beautiful sentiments of love. And that's what Krishna really enjoys. And that's what we really enjoy, because we're spiritual beings too. Uh, what we really enjoy is the relationship of love. And the exchange of any kind of material benefits or service is just a pretext. It's just an enabling factor for that love. You see? So when we approach Krishna, who is the unlimited reservoir of unconditional love, not spiritual pleasure, and so on, then we are relishing a taste that can never have, never be exhausted. It never has an end. It's unlimited. It's unconditional. It's not subject to the limitations of the material world or the conditions of the modes of nature. You see? It's completely independent of the modes of nature because anyone can think of, chant, hear, and remember Krishna's name at any time. There's nothing to stop us. Nothing can stop us. Huh? We can always think of Krishna. Krishna designs the world in such a way that any living entity can perform devotional service at any time. And there's nothing that can stop it. That means devotional service is unconditional. Just like Krishna's love is unconditional. And when we render devotional service to Krishna, we can feel that love. That's Krishna's blessing to the devotee. And when we feel that love, we naturally begin to manifest different symptoms like chanting, dancing, laughing, uh, all these different symptoms, anubhav. Uh, these are called anubhav. So when you see the devotees dancing and chanting uh, or doing different kinds of work for Krishna or exhibiting different symptoms of ecstasy uh, to whatever degree, could be a small degree or could be a large degree, doesn't matter. Those are all spiritual symptoms. They're all anubhava. And so we should understand these things uh, in the right context. Uh, they're not material manifestations. Of course, if someone imitates them without having the actual spiritual consciousness, then that's material. 
Uh, so imitating a symptom of symptoms of ecstasy is uh, very bogus, <laughs> not recommended. That's called sahajya. Sahajya means cheap. If someone wants to be a cheap devotee, sometimes they'll they'll uh, cry or laugh or do crazy things, you know, uh, to imitate a devotee. But it never works out very well. <laughs> because people can tell. Uh, you can tell when someone is sincere or when someone is putting you on. Huh? You can tell if they're really acting from their heart or they're just imitating. Everyone can tell. Huh? Because we're all spiritual living entities. And we all know or potentially can know if we want to know whether someone is for real or they're just imitating. So uh, let's understand this properly. When a devotee performs devotional activities, they're doing it out of spiritual love. And those activities are symptoms of their spiritual ecstasy. They're symptoms of ecstatic love. And that's called anubhava, which means following or subsequent ecstasy. What is it following? What is it subsequent to? The performance of devotional service. And it's a result of Krishna reciprocating with the devotee from within. So that's Anubhava. Any questions? How so? body becomes spiritualized or the food becomes spiritualized and so on is this connected with the meaning of spiritual in terms of eternal like usually we think of if something is spiritual it means it's eternal like that but this body is not eternal uh, and the food also in its form is not eternal so when we say spiritual uh, what shade of meaning is that okay can you write the question Uddhava on the on the chat We got a request that it, people can't hear the questions. So, uh, when we say that the body is spiritualized or food is spiritualized, does it mean that uh, it is eternal? Okay, I I answered this question before actually. Um, when we're offering food or when we're performing spiritual activities with the body. What we're doing is we're putting Krishna's energy into the proper relationship with Krishna. Okay, So the energy, being material energy, is naturally non-eternal. But the relationship is eternal. The relationship of service to Krishna is eternal. Huh? Because it exists before this body and it will exist after this body is finished. So when a devotee offers food or other service to Krishna in this body, then the body becomes spiritualized in the sense that it is placed into the proper relationship, an, an eternal spiritual relationship with Krishna. It's like the devotee takes whatever he has and offers it to Krishna. Whatever Krishna sends, huh? Just like Krishna very kindly is sending money and other facilities and resources so that we can maintain our mission here. Huh? Different devotees become instruments of Krishna and they actually, uh, by Krishna's urging them from within their heart, they make some donation. Huh? And this is very kind because it allows us to preach full time. We don't have to worry about earning money. So by that means then we, uh, we take this money and we engage it in Krishna's service to support our preaching activities. Now, preaching is an eternal activity, right? But money is temporary. This body is temporary. All this the computers and cameras and all this other stuff is temporary. Right? But the relationship of the activities to Krishna is eternal because Krishna himself preaches 
in the Vedas. He gives this same knowledge that we're giving in the Vedas, and the Vedas are eternal. You see? So we're using Krishna's non-eternal external energy to support activities that are eternal in quality. Does that answer your question? Okay, good. Any other questions? Oops, what happened? Did everyone has to log in again? No, I think it's that. But no questions. Hmm. Did they did they miss part of the uh, talk? No, no, the most of the talk. Okay, well, there has to be some questions, right? Jennifer. Uh, 